questions from people. Okay, so the scripture that spoke to me, actually, um, Pastor Kim referenced it last night, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Feel free to take notes. I'm a big note taker because I know once I leave a place, I'm trying to remember what did she say? What did he say? So feel free to take notes um, that apply to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Everyone say steadfast. steadfast. Immovable. Immovable. Always abounding, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. vain. So important for us to remember that when we're serving is we want to be steadfast, we want to be immovable, we want to always abound in the work of the Lord because we do know that anything that we do in the Lord is never in vain. Amen. Somebody say, I am relentless. I am relentless. So I'm an engager. So definitely y'all talk, y'all gonna be talking back to me, okay? Because I love that. Uh, so let's begin with what relentless is not. Okay, relentless is not you never desire to quit. You never want to give up. You never think about going off on someone who is creating trouble for you. Come on. We've all been there. And we kind of tell ourselves, well, I didn't say it, but I was thinking it. Right. But the Holy Spirit does deals with our thoughts as well. Again, this is what relentless is not. That you never get angry or upset or impatient, especially with naysayers or difficult people or doubters, that God, you know, people who doubt that God called you to do what it is that you're doing. And so sometimes we can get angry, we can get upset, we can get frustrated, we can lose our patience. And not just in ministry, but as we serve in ministry, sometimes in other areas of our lives, right? I see head shaking. You know, sometimes in your personal life, you can get frustrated with different situations that you're dealing with. What relentless is not is that you never have feelings of fear or anxiety or worry. I remember years ago, I was um, preaching in, at a church in Ocala and a woman said to me, no, we're never supposed to fear anything. And I, I said to her, I believe, she quoted the scripture that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And I said to her, I, I kind of take a different view. I believe that God knew we would fear sometimes. So he gave us word to tell us how to deal with it. So when fear comes, it's like God saying to us, just remember, I didn't give you that spirit. What I gave you was a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And so if we look at the word not through the lens of critiquing or judging and, and making assumptions about each other, but if we look at the word, especially us as women in ministry who need to support each other, if we look at the word as, you know, well, we're going to deal with things in our humanness. How can we walk it out? through the word? How can we do that? How can we support each other through it? What relentless is not is that you never will have a medical problem, an injury, a financial difficulty, or a situation at home. What relentless, relentless is not is that you will never question God or that you'll never have moments of doubts about your calling or about what you're doing and where you're doing it. Did everybody catch that? Those are all things that relentless is not, is not. We're a three part being, we're spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, and we live in a body. And so therefore we're going to experience human thoughts, emotions, attitudes, and reactions. The key is, what do we do when we're facing some of those examples that I just gave? That's really the key. How do we handle it? Are we going to be reactive or, or are we going to be proactive in a biblical sense? So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Somebody say, I am relentless. I am relentless. You got to give a little attitude to it. Because this, this is what I heard. I am relentless. No. I'm relentless. I'm going to give a little attitude to it. I am relentless. I am relentless. Now turn to your sister and say, you are relentless. You are relentless. 
Now look straight ahead and say, we are relentless. We are relentless. See, I love it. By the time you got to the third one, you were in it. <laughs> you were in it. It's the goal of the enemy to throw you off. It's the goal of the enemy to keep you on the sidelines of your life. You ever watch a football game? You know, it's the men that's in the game. That's where the fun and excitement is. But it's also where they're getting hurt. Hear that in the spirit realm. But those that are sitting on the sideline, they're watching the game, maybe throwing a towel up in the air, saying a couple of words that they shouldn't be saying in their frustration for the problems that their team is experiencing. But how many of y'all know I don't ever want to be on that sideline? I want to be in the game. Even, even though it will mean that sometimes I'm going to get hurt. And it means the same thing for you too. But we have victory in who? Jesus. Jesus. I'm with the right, the right crowd today. Praise God. The enemy wants us to quit. He wants us to be depleted and defeated. And so we have to remember that we do have victory. For some of you, this message today, you may already know it. Maybe you teach and preach it where you are. But we need reminders. We need reminders. We need that encouragement from the Holy Spirit. My grandmother used to say, don't ever get too familiar with the word. You need to hear it over and over. Because you know sometimes how if a pastor is ministering, you know, he's teaching something or she's teaching something. And as soon as they start to say the scripture, you're saying along with them. You go, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But sometimes we need to quiet and take it in. Because God will give you something fresh. A way to walk it fresh. God is good. So here's what relentless does mean. Here's what relentless does mean. It means that you and I, we as women in ministry are unyielding. That means we don't give way to pressure. Come on, y'all. We're unyielding. We're steady. Relentless means steady, meaning firm, fixed. Meaning I, I grew up in, in the era, well, I'm older than my younger brothers, and they grew up with those weeble wobbles. Anybody remember weeble wobbles? I didn't like those ugly things. I just, I was forever pressing my foot down on one of them on the carpet, just trying to see. And every time I took my foot off, it would bounce up with this ridiculous smile on their face. But you know what? That's us. Because the enemy will throw everything he's got at you and he'll put his, try to put his foot on you, but you will always bounce back in the Lord and give him a ridiculous smile. Come on. God is good. So relentless is also means persistent, meaning keep moving forward. Keep the momentum in God. Don't lose your momentum in God. Relentless means determined. Meaning our minds are set on God's directives, on, ki on kingdom love, kingdom purpose, kingdom fulfillment. But we've got to take that in through the word of God and keep ingesting the word of God. Because the enemy is going to continue to come at us. And sometimes he comes through people. Sometimes it's not a direct attack um, from him to you, but through situations and circumstances and the weaknesses of people. Relentless also means uncompromising. Come on, somebody say uncompromising. That means being unwilling to make concessions in our character and in how we serve. So when the weight is on us, when we're dealing with situations that sometimes you'll face wanting to compromise a little bit, that's the time to, to say, no, I'm not going to compromise because I know who I am and I know whose I am. So I am not going to compromise. Relentless also means fierce and unwavering. Mm. Standing on God's precepts and principles and his promises. Amen? Amen? Being unwavering, saying, you know what? I not only believe in God, but I believe God. Amen. There's a difference. I believe in him. I put my trust in him through Jesus Christ. But I also believe him. I believe what he says. 
on my worst days, when I'm crying, when I'm hurting, when I'm agitated, when I'm frustrated, when my body is failing me, when situations are happening that's out of my control, that's not the time for me to quit, God. It's the time for me to say, I believe you, Father. I believe your word. I believe your word. I believe your promises, your precepts, your principles, your promises. Relentless means being unstoppable, not slacking, maintaining speed and vigor, mm. meaning effort, energy, and enthusiasm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. That's you. You're a relentless woman. You know, these, I believe that Pastor Deanna prays with her team to get the word from God on what these uh, times of conferences need to be, what the theme is, if you will. And we use the word theme, but really it's a word from God. Amen. And so since it's a word from God, we've got to take it in that way. We've got to take it in that this is God saying that we are his relentless daughters in the kingdom. Amen. That we are relentless. It doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. It doesn't mean we're not going to have situations that we face. But we must be relentless. So I want to look at six characteristics of being relentless. Number one, being relentless as women in ministry. Number one, relentless women have faith and trust in God's power and purpose in the middle of the problems. I'll say it again. Relentless women, I see note takers. Oh, I love y'all, I'm a big note taker. You get a star and you get a star. <laughs> Relentless women have faith and trust in God's power and purpose in the middle of the problems. I think of uh, Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10. You can read it at home. Mark 10 verses 46 to 52. But what I love about uh, blind Bartimaeus is um, he was, of course, a blind beggar on the side of the road. And when he heard that Jesus um, was coming through, he started shouting. You know, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And people rebuked him. You know, isn't it like people to do that? You need help from the Lord. You're shouting out. You think, Jesus, help me. And someone's saying, you're being too loud. You're worshiping too hard. Your praise is just too much. But you know what? Don't get mad at them. They just haven't walked through some things that you've walked through. So they don't understand how come you worship so hard. How come you praise with such intensity. How come you're so thankful to God. How come you shout out, Jesus, help me. Help me to be a better person, a better woman. Help me to be a better leader. Help me to be a better wife or a better single woman or a better single mom or a better mom. Or help me to be just a better person, a better Christian. They don't understand when we're crying out that way. And that's okay. They'll, they'll mature and come along too. Don't get upset with people who don't get you. Oh, that was for somebody. Maybe that was for me. I'm just going to receive that from me. That was for me. Thank you, Lord. That was for me. Because oftentimes people just don't get you when you're serious. But now I'm a wig girl. So today you see me like this. On the cover of the catalog, you see me with different hair. I've worn wigs since January of 2000. There's a reason I'm sharing this, because of what I just said. I got hair up under my head, but I had a hysterectomy in 1997, and hormonally, it straightened my hair. And after, from 97 to the beginning of 2000, I did adrenal gland testing, hair testing, lots of prayer, everything that I needed to do, and my hair just would not cooperate. And then I met uh, a sister in Christ and her hair looked amazing. And I said, oh, what do you, where do you go? What do you, what do you do to get your hair like that? She said, girl, this is a wig. And she pulled it and I said, oh, <laughs> she said, how are you black and not know about wigs? I said, I don't know. I guess I missed that. I don't know. 
So she took me shopping and two hours later, I come out of the wig place with bags. And I said that to say, there are people who get me in that and there are people who don't get me in that. And I'm okay on either side. So take my wig story and use it in your own life for whatever it is about you that's uniquely different. Whatever it is about you that other people are not going to understand. But you'll always have a remnant of people that will cheer and say, you know what, girl, go ahead, wear those wigs. You're rocking those wigs. So whatever it is in your life. That wasn't in my notes. That was a freebie. Praise the Lord. Yes, just letting you, letting you have that. So back to blind Bartimaeus. And so he cried out and he cried out and he was rebuked. But then... Here's what happened. He got Jesus's attention. So sometimes the crying out, if we're just standing there kind of, oh, God, I just wish the Lord would look over here. Sometimes we need to just say, Jesus, Lord, I need you to help me in this. And so then the Lord called him over, right? And he asked him this question. What do you want me to do for you? And blind Bartimaeus told him what he wanted. He wanted his sight. And then Jesus said, go, your faith and confident trust in me and in my power has made you well. Relentless women have got to have that level of faith and confident trust in the Lord. That's, that was number one. We've got to have that level of it. It's not going to just come because we're Christian. We've got to nurture our relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've got to cry out. It doesn't matter who's on the left or right, if it's in your church service or wherever you are. We've got to cry out to the Lord. We've got to be willing to say, I need you, Lord. I need you to heal my broken heart. I need you to strengthen my body. I need you to align my mind with the mind of Christ. I need you to help me to walk in the fruit of your spirit. I need you to help me not just to walk in your gifts, but I want your fruit. I want your character, Lord. I want people to see you when they look at me, not just gifts. I want them to see that I actually love you and love them. I want to flow in your nine fruits of the spirit. Lord, I want to be creative. I want to be creative in the ways that I serve. I want to be creative in how I share you with other people. You know, uh, again, I'll re probably reference my grandparents a lot because they started me in the things of God and in leadership at seven. But one thing grandma used to say all the time is, you know, ask God for creative ways to do what you do. Don't just do the same. Don't sing the same song the same way. You know, just ask God for creative ways to reach his people, for creative ways to, to bring his message of wholeness to other people. And so Jesus is saying, what do you want me to do for you? And I believe he's asking that, that question to each one of us in this room today. What do you want me to do for you? For those who walked in late, number one was relentless women have faith and trust in God's power and purpose in the middle of problems. You can get the info from your neighbor if you need to when, when this is done. So answer that question to the Lord. We don't have to hold in stuff that's going on. We can release it to him. If there's anyone that you can trust with your business, because you can't trust everybody with your business. You can't tell everybody what's going on in your life. You can't because judgments and assumptions will come. And as leaders, we cannot tell the people that we're, we're servant leader to, we can't dump our stuff on them. That's not what they're there for. We're there to serve their needs, amen? They're not there to serve our needs. And so let Jesus know, help me to, help me to square off with the enemy through radical faith in you. Give me the words to, to say what I need to say as a leader. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me revelatory knowledge as I feed on your word. Basically, we're saying, Lord, make me a relentless woman. Make me a relentless woman. Number two, relentless woman, relentless women worship through the storms, not whine. We worship, we don't whine. Wine, W-H-I-N-E. We worship. 
We worship, we don't want, we worship our way through situations. Now, sometimes complaints come. Sometimes a spirit of complaint will come on you and you got to vent something and all of that. But get quickly back in step with the Holy Spirit. And the way we do that is turn first to worship. Worship your way through whatever is going on. We see that in Acts 16, verses 16 through 40. And you can read that again at home with Paul and Silas. We, Most of us, if not all of us, know that story when they were on their way to prayer. And, and uh, the woman who was a fortune teller was just harassing them. And finally, Paul got angry. And well, the word says he got annoyed. If it was me, I'd have got angry. But Paul turned around and he rebuked that demon. And he called it out of her in the name of Jesus. And of course, that made her owner upset because she was a fortune teller so she was making money for the owner right and so long story short Paul and Silas were beaten they were brought into the marketplace they were beaten their clothes were torn off ultimately they were thrown in prison their feet were put in stocks but what I love about Paul and Silas is they weren't complaining so why did God let this happen why did God fail us why is this happening to us you know, that's it. When we get out of here, I'm not on my way to prayer anymore. No, instead, the word says that they were worshiping. They were singing and praying, singing hymns to God, right? To me, that means they were worshiping their way through, not whining. But, but it's also, again, we have to condition ourselves to be that way. Because our normal human tendency would be, Lord, what is going on here? I'm serving you and I'm thrown in prison? Well, how are we going to break out of here? Our normal reaction wouldn't be, or we'd be crying. Some would be cussing, right? But our, that would be our normal reaction. But that's not the reaction that Paul and Silas, doesn't mean they weren't upset, and I'm sure they were scared. And I'm sure, I'm sure that it was a heavy a burden on them. But they cho chose to worship God. To worship. Somebody say, I am relentless. I am relentless. We know the story. If you don't, please go read it. Because at the midnight hour, after all that singing and praying and worshiping God, that earthquake came and shook them free. We know what happened beyond that. Go home and read the story. See what happens when we are obedient to God. When we choose worship over whining. When we choose to obey him and to, and to remember, number one, to operate in that faith and confident trust in him. That's what Paul and Silas had to do. Number three, well, let me first say this. We're going to deal with negative, painful, upsetting, shocking, cruel, hurtful situations as women in ministry. But our desire still has to be to do the will of the Father. Amen. I've been in ministry literally my whole life, but the last three years has been the most difficult time from the beginning of 2020. And I'm just gonna say it wasn't due to COVID. So as a result of that, I my worship has intensified. My prayer life has gone next level. I go deeper in God. As the enemy tries to slap me, I slap him back through the word. Come on, we don't, I, there's some kind of meme that goes around about when a woman puts her feet on the floor in the morning, the devil gets scared. I don't, I don't, that's, it's, if that's your thing, that's okay. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that what intimidates and scares the devil is the presence of Jesus. Jesus, it's at the name of Jesus, demons will tremble. Not Lisa waking up in the morning, put her feet on the floor. You know, and I know the greater meaning behind that meme, but it's because I'm living for Jesus and I'm using his name and not just using his name like the seven sons of Sceva did and end up getting whipped by the demons. I don't just use his name. I'm using his name out of relationship with him. I don't call myself Mrs. Shaw just because I'm married to Peter Shaw 33 years and counting. I use Mrs. Shaw also because we're in relationship. There's a relationship, a beautiful relationship there. I don't take that last name Shaw for granted. 
there's relationship. Such is the same with me and Jesus. Number three, relentless women understand that they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And not just empowered, but that dunamis power. Dunamis is Greek for the word power. So we need that level of power. We got to get back to talking about the Holy Ghost. I came up calling him the Holy Ghost. We got to get back to talking about the Holy Spirit and leaning on him. I love John 14, 26 in the Amplified. But the helper, our comforter, I love it. The Holy Spirit, they say helper. And then they go on to define all the ways that he helps us. Comforter advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. Come on. That's who we have living in inside of us. But if we don't tap into that relationship with him and lean on the Holy Spirit, then we're going to be doing whatever we're doing in ministry in our own strength and our own power. And we will wane we will faint we will grow weary faster than usual our words won't be right our character will be messed up you know um jesus told the disciples you will not lord over the people well people in ministry especially in leadership if they're not walking in in step with the holy spirit there's a lot of lording over the people we don't want to be that way there's no way that we can face the problems situations crisis challenges in our personal lives as well in our areas of ministry or on the job or within our teams departments and groups or in our families without allowing the dunamis power of the holy spirit to lead us my recommendation to you is what i do every morning after i pray to the father i ask the holy spirit to impart wisdom to me to impart more grace to give me revelatory knowledge as i read the word of god to take over and bridle my tongue as i go through the day with my family with my friends and working through my business and serving at the church bridle my tongue meaning so catch me before i respond or react to some kind of craziness. I don't want to react to crazy. Come on, do y'all catch that? I don't want to react crazy to craziness. I want to react in a manner that pleases God. We need the Holy Spirit to live right, to walk right, to talk right, to teach right, to serve right. We need him for everything. To walk in peace, everything. We need the Holy Spirit. So don't leave him out. Don't leave him out of your life. It's, it's almost like we, we have the Father. And we, and people say, well, I have Jesus within me. And the Holy Spirit is standing here saying, uh, I'm here to bring back to your remembrance the words of Christ. I'm here to comfort you right now while you're hurting. I'm here to be your advocate. I'm, I'm interceding for, hello, I'm here. I'm here. And we're just like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to handle this situation. The Holy Spirit said, I'm here. Yes. So don't, don't leave him out. Don't leave them out of your life or your situations. Number four, relentless women aren't, they aren't unafraid, but they are courageous. Relentless women aren't unafraid, but they are courageous. We see that in the book of Ruth. You know, to me, the focus really is Naomi in this and all of what Naomi went through. If you haven't read Ruth in a long time, I want to ask you to go home and read the book of Ruth. But what I love about that story that relates to being, they're not unafraid, but they're courageous, is think about what Naomi went through. She lost her husband, both her sons. She had two daughter-in-laws that were really like daughters to her. And here she's trying to figure out what am I going to do to take care of them? They're all, and so much so that she was willing to tell them, go back to your people, go back to the Moabites. Maybe you can get husbands, you're still young. Maybe you can have children, you're still young. I'm old now, and I can, I'm feeling Naomi in that. I'm old now. There's no life that can come out of me in terms of from the womb. If, even if, Naomi said, even if I got married again and had a son, by the time that son is old enough to marry, you'll be old, right? But what I love is Naomi in her hurt, in her, in her feeling of despair, her heart saying, you know what? I feel like God has forgotten me or forsaken me, even in all of that. And don't you sometimes, if we tell the truth, sometimes can you feel that way in ministry and in our private lives or other areas? You can feel like, God, are you there? Did you hear me? Do you see, do you see what she's doing? 
Do you see how she's undermining my leadership? Do you see the gossip, God? Do you see what's going on? Do you see how I'm overlooked? Do you see the sexism that I'm going through, God? Sometimes we deal with that. Everybody understand the word sexism? Okay, just want to make sure. And I'm not throwing out a word that where someone's saying she was talking about sex. You know, sexism. Especially with men not wanting women to, to uh, lead over them. Not all men, but some men. But even in all of that, she made that decision to go back to her hometown, to go back to Judah. And when the women greeted her, she even said, no, 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 no. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter. I know that God has forgotten me. But you know what? Even in that, and I'm sure she was afraid, depressed, discouraged, angry. But even in that, she still was willing to follow after the God that she thought forsaked her and forgotten about her. And I love that. Sometimes we don't understand God's decisions, but we can trust his heart toward us. When I lost my grandparents, when I lost my baby brother to suicide, other things that have happened in my life, you know, I'm standing here, I might not look so bad. I mean, I hope I don't look so bad. I might not look so bad, but I have medical things going on in my body, things that people know about, some things that people don't know about. But I know that God hasn't forgotten me. I know that he's not forsaken me. I know that. And so I might not understand some of his decisions, but I sure trust his heart toward me. And I want you to do the same thing. Number five, relentless women understand the power of obtaining support without apology or shame. Relentless women understand the power of obtaining support without apology or shame. So I wanna say this, I think women in ministry, and you can disagree with me, that's okay, just don't yell it out, tell me later. <laughs> I believe that women in ministry, you need God, you need the word, you need prayer, you need the Holy Spirit, you need a sister in Christ, you need a coach, and you need a counselor Amen. as women in ministry. Because we go through so many things, and a lot of times we go through it just like this. <laughs> How you doing, Pastor Lisa? I'm good. Praise the Lord. I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. Good. I'm glad we're both good. <laughs> but then you're crying on the side. You're discouraged. You're being, maybe you're being mistreated. Maybe you're being undermined. Maybe your character is being attacked. Maybe you're just tired of people that are acting crazy around you. Maybe you are overwhelmed. Maybe you're discouraged, but none of that's going to come out of your mouth. Right? And to some degree, it shouldn't to the wrong people or the wrong person. But you've got to have these people in your life that you can turn to. And so very openly and transparently, I'm going to say this. In October of 2021, um, after going through over a year of just major attacks in a certain situation it had nothing to do with my home front thank god my home front's always peaceable and i thank god for that but i was going through some heavy 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 situation and stepped into a role that i was asked to step into i prayed about it i stepped into the role i really don't want to give a lot of details but lots of attacks came and because i've been in the things of god my whole life and for the most part, I've always been loved on and I've always loved people. And so I minister to them in the hurts that they deal with, but I've not had to be on the receiving end of like major attacks. I'm on the receiving end of major attacks from the enemy, obviously, but I've never had certain things go on that were going on. I mean, they were major and I'm not gonna talk about them. But after January of 2020 through October 2021, and then something happened that month that brought it all to a head. And I found myself crying out to God and saying, you know, and I had been praying all along. I knew all the spiritual things to do, and I trust God. 
But I realized that even though I had the support of my husband 100%, and I had the support of my, my youngest daughter who is 30, but um, at the time was what, 28, 27, um, and the support of a dear friend that lives out of state, I still knew, how many of y'all know that sometimes those people that are closest to you, they know you. So they're saying, look, you know how to stand on the word. You know, I needed somebody where I could just say, I am really dealing with a mess here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't spiritual talk me. Yeah. I already know how to pray. Yeah. I've been praying. So I ended up going to a counselor and I'm from New York, born and raised came up obviously in the black culture. We didn't go to therapy. Mm -hmm. We heard things like this. Mm -hmm. Let go and let God. Come on. Gird up your loins. All right. Shake it off. Yeah. Give it to God. Uh -huh. Don't complain. Now all that has its place, right? All of that does have its place. There's value to that, obviously. But when you are going through H-E-L-L, -L, and it is coming from north, south, east, and west. And it's been long enduring and it's every day and it's chronic. Sometimes you need to sit across from someone who's neutral. And she's Christian, praise Jesus. And so I did end up going for, for that additional support. And at first I gave all kinds of rules. I don't want nothing written down. I don't want, don't ask me my church. Don't ask me my private life. I don't want nothing connected back to my business. Come on, you know why? Because you come up sometimes in a world that says, be ashamed of that. Be ashamed of needing to talk to someone. I'm not ashamed of that. I had to get over that real quick and realize I don't have to apologize for saying I need some support right now, a different type of support. And so she prayed with me and also counseled me through and I bless God for her. So, so that's number five. Relentless women understand the power of to obtaining support without apology or shame. Sometimes you're going to walk through certain things where you need, you, obviously we need the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you have a spouse as loving as I do, and I hope you do. If you have a best friend, a best friend that you can share certain things with. Let me, let me throw that in. Uh, someone that you can trust. But Sometimes you need that professional support. Everybody, everybody with me in that? Yeah. Nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about. Just to help you look at things a little bit different. Yes, a little bit differently. And also to, to express it, get it out. Not in a venting way, because sometimes you need to vent. But when you're really being attacked from all sides, sometimes it's that you need, especially when it's a sensitive situation. That's all I'll say. So you need to be able to have someone neutral that you can talk to. Other women are going through too. Not just you, not just me. Other women are going through too. There's mess in ministry all the time. But that's part of the beauty of it. It's because we can iron sharpens iron. We can support each other. We can be there for each other. That's why I'm always asking, especially in the environments where I'm leaving, leading. I always say, talk to each other. Greet your neighbor. Say hello. You might be the only Jesus they're going to experience right now. Two Wednesday nights ago at prayer service, we had a similar situation and, and, I, and I was saying, you know, let's greet each other and this and the other thing. After about 30 minutes of praying, I like to do the greeting. And this woman just bust out crying because somebody greeted her. And she says, you know what? I've just been tormented lately. But just that hug, that Jesus hug, right? Just blessed her so much. Okay, let me run on down to the end here. The final one is number six. Relentless women are radical in prayer. Did y'all notice I said radical? There is nothing wrong with prayers like this. Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for your love, your goodness, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray like that. Anybody else pray like that? Sometimes, sometime, right? Nothing wrong with that. But depending on the level of attack. Sometimes I go get in my truck if my husband's working from home. 
you know, because I don't, I don't want to blow up his, he's in his office, and I don't want to blow up his work over there, because I'm in my office, I'm just, I'm there. I'm binding and loosing. I'm casting down, I'm pulling down strongholds. I'm using my spiritual authority in Christ to let the devil know, you don't have to be scared of me, but you better be scared of who I know. You gotta be afraid of who I belong to. And so, relentless women are radical in prayer. There's a time where you just gotta let it go, whip the wig off, whip off the glasses, take off your eyelashes if you wear eyelashes, kick your shoes off, and start walking and praying in the spirit. And let the enemy know, not here. Not my house, not my family, not my church, not my friends, not me, not my body, not my peace of mind. And I'm going to pray till something breaks. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, let me go back to teaching because I'm not, I'm not here to preach. Don't settle for what is thrown at you through the weaknesses of people the enemy uses because we know the battle is not with people, right? But don't settle for that. Don't settle for those attacks from the enemy. Be certain to pray radical prayers. Those kind of prayers to say, God, I trust you. I'm going to stand on your word. I don't care what this situation looks like. I don't care who's talking, who's gossiping, who's lying, who's undermining, who don't want me in this role, who don't like me, who doesn't want a woman doing this. I don't care. I'm going to stand on your word, God, because you put me here. You sent me. I didn't ask. You sent me and I trust you in this. Or God, I know that, that every time I turn around, there's a bad medical report over the last three years between injuries to my knees to now having a heart condition to other things that's been going on and 12 years with my esophagus. But still, I said, God, I know you're in control. You're in control. So I'm going to worship my way through. And I'm going to pray my way through. And I'm going to stand on your word. And I'm going to keep serving. And all of you have got to do the same. Because I know all of you going through something or have or will. All of us. So stand on God's word. Somebody say, I am, I am relentless. relentless. God is good. I want to leave you with this scripture. Philippians 4 and 13, we all know it as, come on, say it with me. I can do all things. Yes. But I want, I want you to hear it in the Amplified because I'm going to leave you with this and I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to say it with my New York attitude. Is that okay? I can do, thank you, sis. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him, Jesus, who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. How's that sound? Awesome. Let's rise to our feet. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, that we are women of faith, women who have confidence and trust in you, women who will worship our way through, Father, and not whine, women who know how to support one another, God, women, Father, who are going to be radical in prayer, Lord. We are those women. We are determined to be those women, women who stand on your Holy Spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit, God. And I pray right now, Father, that you would just give a fresh wind of your Holy Spirit to every woman in this room, Lord, to every one of these precious women that have said yes to you, Lord, who have said, here I am, send me, use me, God, just fulfill your purpose in my life, God, for every one of those women, I ask you to send a refreshing of your Holy Spirit, God, I pray, Lord, that wherever they're weak or fatigued or weary, God, or worn, that your Holy Spirit would step in and bring encouragement to them, Father, wherever there's discouragement.
Amen. I pray, Lord, wherever they're, they're saying, you know what, Lisa, I can't say it out loud, but, but you put your finger right on some of the things that I'm dealing with. Well, God, you know what those things are in their lives. And I ask you to minister to those areas, Father. I thank you, Lord, that greater are you that's in us than the enemy that's prowling around in this world. I'm grateful, God, that we are valued by you. I'm grateful, God, that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I thank you, God, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, God. I'm grateful that we are your workmanship, God. I'm grateful that you are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. I'm grateful, Father, that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. Father, I ask you to be everything that these precious women need, God. Bless their household. Bless their families, Father. Grant them the restored good health that they need, God. And I pray, Father, for those of us of a certain age, Father, that you would help us to have retention, the ability to retain information, the ability to recall information, Father. We're not down and out. We're not too old for anything, God. We see the people in your word that was making babies well into three digits of their ages, God. And so we rebuke this whole thought that we're too old to do anything. But Father, we thank you for the young generation. We pray that we would pour out to them. But God, we also thank you that you're not done with us either. And so I thank you for, for just creative ideas for these women. I pray for new missions for them, God. For new opportunities for them to serve your kingdom. Kingdom. I pray, God, that they would be bold in your Holy Spirit, that they would share Jesus. Lord, we know the mission field is from the moment we open our eyes. Our family is our mission field. When we step out the front door, it's our mission field. When we go to work or work our businesses or go to church or go to the grocery store or serve in education or the medical field, wherever we are, God, that's our mission field. So use these women, Father. Use them mightily for your glory. And we say thank you. Come on, can we lift our hands to the Father and say, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for making us relentless women. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Such an 